So, uh, as of yesterday, Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom finally dropped after, like, seven years, and I'm gonna talk about my initial impressions and opinions on it in this video. It's gonna be relatively short and relatively easy to make, uh, and it's also topical, so, uh, perfect, 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 hey, hey, hey. So, uh, yeah, in this video, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna only show footage from the tutorial area. Essentially, this game's, there's, there's this one set of Skylands, that's a Essentially, this game's equivalent to the Great Plateau, and I'm, I'm gonna only show footage from that. And I'm also gonna be mainly talking about my experience there. I'll be at this as of recording this. I've beaten that, and I've and then after going down to the ground, I've traveled over to Hata to Hateno Village. So that's my experience. I'll be basing off of that, but I'll be sticking to footage, mainly B-roll footage of this game's Great Plateau. Just to make it clear, but when it comes to things in the Great Plateau area, things. Anything that isn't narrative, like anything mechanical, is uh, off is, is off the cuff. Expect it's. I'm not restricting myself with spoilers, whereas I might spoil narrative stuff. I'll put on text here in post, but I might. I think I'm just going to talk about mechanical stuff. So yeah, there's been six years of hype from this point. First, the vague, they'll probably make a Breath of the Wild 2, then them confirming they'll make a Breath of the Wild 2, then the Breath of the Wild 2 trailer, then the another trailer dropping in 2021, two years later, then the Man Seen the Kingdom, the, the, not, not the Kingdom, the, the, the title, like Tears of the Kingdom back in 2022, and then a whole bunch more trailers, and then finally we've gotten the game coming out this week. It's, uh, yeah, it's all over the newspaper, it's a big cultural event. <laughs> so that's cool. So, upon initial impressions of it, okay, so one thing I've noticed is, is they've changed Link's haircut. There was an arbitrary thing that happened with Ganon, so basically took Link back to square one, three hearts, one ro row of stamina, which was frankly to be expected, but during that violent event, his hair got, whatever was holding his hair in a man bun got, is, got destroyed, so now it's loose. In addition, though, there's this... You're, you might you can you can get this skirt really early on in the game. It's like it's part of a tunic like item set, so it's like it's still man clothes technically. But like, they made Femboy Link, and yeah, this is. If if you've been on R slash trans, you you know if you've been on there, you know this is kind of a bit pandering to that demographic, but anyway, so yeah, there's that. One thing that's really annoyed me is that's really come to mind is lack of paragl paraglider. Like, for instance, I was climbing around the cliffs in, in Kakariko Village earlier today, and I, it's really hard to get down if you don't have a paraglider. It's really annoying. Like, really annoying. Like, this was a very bad change. It genuinely makes the game a lot a lot harder to play and just enjoy a lot of the time. It makes traversing this cliff-filled world a bit of a pain in the ass. Plus, the paraglider would make a lot of sense to have in the sky. Actually, no, I remember seeing in the trailer, but you don't get it after completing t t the tutorial. So, maybe you get it at a later story time. Maybe you just have to find it in some random chest in Rito Village. I don't know. Either way, the fact I haven't got it yet, in spite of being, like, a good 20 hours into the game, not 20 hours into the game, but, like, 10 hours, 15 hours into the game, is annoying. It's really annoying. But, uh, yeah, they've replaced, this game has Zonai tech in this. They finally explained what the Zonai wore there. Are. All the Zonai stuff in Breath of the Wild is just foreshadowing for this game's version of Sheikah tech, basically. Like, Zonai tech is basically just Sheikah tech, but, like reimagined from the ground up but like it's the same concept of like ancient magical technology uh yeah it's it's not that new and interesting so the sheik attack was a thing six years ago i mean it's slightly different that it's not corrupted by ganon in this one but it's we've seen this before but still it's cool it has a new aesthetic we see these various sonai robots walking around the tutorial area the initial sky island which I think is a really cool improvement on the sky, on the whole tutorial area, because in the Great Plateau, there was just the king to keep you company. It felt really lonely and entropic, whereas having all the this whole society of robots chilling in the sky really makes the whole tutorial area much more lively. I think I, I frankly prefer it this way to how it was in the Breath of the Wild. That'll be it. That brings me to a slight complaint I have: the tutorial area. So, they have a tutorial area in this game that's basically just a clone of the Great Plateau, except now it's a Sky Island. Which, look, 
There's probably going to be some 12-year-olds jumping in who, ha who haven't played Breath of the Wild, who needs a tutorial. And frankly, they deserve a tutorial in Path the Great Plateau, but I wish it were, they, there was some kind of streamlining to make it so that experienced players could get through it really quickly, because I've already played through the Great Plateau, and it's like... It's not nearly as enjoyable. It's like, it feels almost sluggish in the second time. I want to explore this new version of the Hyrule that's being rebuilt and is now being redestroyed. You know? I want to go around the Skylands, but nope, I'm stuck doing a slow ass, long ass tutorial again. You know? It's a whole thing. As well as, it's also because of just the movement mechanics in Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild's really slippery. It's really easy to accidentally step on stall desks. Like, Zen desks, like, you know, like. You know, there's stores, right? Imagine a store, right? It's very easy to accidentally step up onto the desk in Breath of the Wild because the game is very slippery, which in turn makes it very easy to fall off the cliffs, which gets very annoying in the tutorial area. I definitely think it would, be, would have been better if instead of being a, a cluster of closely connected skyline islands, it was one giant sky island, possibly the biggest skyline island in the game, and the only place where you could fall off would be the edge, or maybe in some caves. I think that would have made that would have been a better version of this. But regardless, it still does its job, but yeah, it is really a clone of the Great Plateau. They have shrines, yes, there's four shrines, and you escape it once you get at all four shrine, past all four shrines, albeit there they are kind of linear linearly laid out, unlike last time. You get a rune from each shrine, except for the last shrine where you get it from this other place, which and then you use that rune to get to the shrine, but other than that, you get a a rune per shrine. Also, there's in the the rune menu. That's something that's uh, they reworked the rune menu to be now this wheel thing, and it's really annoying because if you press the R button, it brings up your runes. You can activate your runes with it, right? But if you hold it for too long, it brings you into this rune menu where your where your stick can move around and pick a different rune, right? Now, quite often, I'm I'm moving the stick around as I hit the rune button to you know target what I'm hitting with the rune. But quite a lot of these runes, like for instance the map can be activated as a rune, even though you can access it in other ways. Meaning that, it's like, now when you, hit, you just hit the R button after that, after that, after that, after that, after that, after that, and then you have to hold it down and change it. And because it's so slippery, and I'm showing footage of it here, presumably, I hope so anyway, it's really hard to click the wrong rune. Sorry about that, I was just rudely interrupted a moment ago, but anyway, as I was saying, yeah, the rune menu in this is really annoying. In fact, in general, the way they've reworked the UI is bad. Now that, now there's, now instead of having multiple tabs for, for just items when you get a load of items, now instead, the items tab just goes lower and lower, so you have to scroll, think like the, the, like the like the storage system, the home storage system in and I'm crossing new horizons which the more you accumulate in that it's hard to find things because it's buried in a pile of shit and I presume the same will apply here so that's rather annoying I, and also it's like the save thing in Breath of the Wild right you'd hit the Z, you'd hit L and R to move between you to, to quickly move between tabs of stuff in your inventory and then you hit ZL and ZR to move between if you if, if you went to the far right of the whole menu you, you could get to the save and load features and going left would hit would take you to the map or actually no you hit minus to go to the map and then plus to go to the inventory menu right and that was simple it worked now it's like you scroll, it's just a long scroll that any button will take you one thing along it, that has the save thing in it, the save thing and the inventory stuff, and then I'm not even quite sure of how the map works. I know you can access it via the rune system, which I've brought up why that is particularly annoying, albeit the Mimibo rune is equally annoying because you can't turn it off, or at least it's turned on by default, and in Breath of the Wild it was turned off by default, so I'm assuming you can turn it off. I probably should have checked that, but fuck it. Anyway, but whenever you activate that, it's like, it, it puts this pop-up on screen about, oh, how to use Amiibo every time you activate it. So it's re... It, the, the, runes, the way the rune UI is set up in this in particular is really, really fucking annoying. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Uh, which, this brings me on now to runes. New runes. The... Okay, so we got rid of all the old runes. In fact, we got rid of the Sheikah Slate, and the map is now done for the Pure Pad. AKA the, Sh the Sheikah Slate, but now it's being redesigned to look more like a Nintendo Switch than a Wii U gamepad. <laughs> Specifically an undocked Nintendo Switch. But anyway, it's back to the runes. The runes are handled via Link's magical, ha magical god hand. And basically, 
all the original runes are gone, so we have a new set of them to contend with. This sounds bad initially, but it's mostly not too bad, because the most important- the only one I'm really grieving the loss of is bombs, but even so, there's ways of getting around that, so luck. Okay, so the first rune you get, because the shrines are now basically linear, but literally it's near impossible to get to the other shrines without having first gone to the shrine this rune is associated with. The, but the first- but anyway, after the, the first shrine, we get the rune that lets us build things. Basic- no, it's called the Ultra Hand, right? And it lets us pick things up and move them around like Magnesis, except it's been buffed in two ways. First of all, it's no longer limited to metal. Anything that isn't- that's its own separate polygon, that's not like a part of the terrain or like grass or something, you can move around like Magnesis, so uh, this can do everything Magnesis can do, so we've essentially not lost that. Plus, it can also fuse things together when they're touching, meaning they can build big mechanical structures, which the game greatly encourages you to do in this tutorial, mainly in the form of various transportation vehicles, like for instance, building a fan-propelled minecart. Hopefully I have footage of that. But... Yeah, so that's a cool thing, but that also, these runes also serve the purpose of crafting, and this is one of the forms of crafting, aka crafting slash building big things. But then the second rune we get is the fuse rune, and basically, when you have it, you have a tool, right? You bring it out. It brings up both your shield and your sword, and then you can fuse that to any entity. This is essentially crafting, because all over the tutorial area, these, these big sticks, all kinds of different sticks, are just basic sticks, but then if you fuse them with a rock, they get various rocks or other items. They can become hammers, fans, axes. You can essentially make your own tools now. So the fuse rune is, is, is basically a full-blown crafting system. And I really fleshed out one at that. Although it's not like you really just fuse them at any point you want. There is a standard design for what it looks like when you fuse, some, when you fuse say, a tree trunk with a, with a wooden stick, for instance. So it's not as in-depth as I first thought, but it still is really in-depth. Also, you can't fuse something that's already been fused. But yeah, then there's this one that lets you basically the ascend one. You know the one where Link turns into a raindrop and then flies up into the sky, then comes to a platform and comes out? That, yeah, that's like this game's Cryonis. It's like, it's situationally useful and otherwise can't do anything. It's situationally really useful, in fact, but otherwise can't do anything. That's the ascend rune for you. You can't even really use this to get up into the Sky Islands, because they're too high to really tell when you're directly under them. So, yeah, that's a thing. And then there's the one that let the Rewind Rune, I forget what it's called, but basically, what it does is, you ba it basically makes, lets you take a thing and make it start moving backwards in time, and that can also push other things as well. And, and this is the rune is also kind of can be clunky to use, just because... Whenever you go into, like, you know when you, you click like, the Magnesis rune in Breath of the Wild and, like, the terrain goes red and it shows you what's magnetic and not? When you do that with this, time freezes so you can't move around, but it's not that bad. There's far bigger rune grievances, uh, as I mentioned earlier. So yeah, th this could be seen as a kind of, like, stasis, but seeing as it moves things back and you can't really pump something full of momentum, which is the main purpose of stasis, yeah, it's not really stasis, but it could be seen that way. Also, the fuse rune ser serves as a replacement for the bomb runes, because you can use it to make hammers, which you can use to smash through rocks and shit, in the same way as the how the bomb rune works. And yeah, the pure pad serves- it also serves as like, a, like the, you, know, the, you know, like the whole telescope thing? It also has the camera thing, it basically does everything the Sheikah Slate did except the runes you get on the Great Plateau. So, uh, yeah. That's, uh, The Lost Tears of the Kingdom. It's, uh, cool, uh, oh yeah, the Sky Islands, they, they exist. That's a thing. They aren't, a, they're also a thing. There's also, like, complete- Ooh, this is me about ten minutes after recording, interjecting to mention that basically- Okay, so you see the Sky Islands? Okay, so they said that they're, that they basically used the world from Breath of the Wild, but edit it for Tears of the Kingdom, like, way back when, and that's technically true, but just to make something clear, the Sky Islands are basically, like, a, an extra separate world added on top of the old world, like, as in, you know how, like, the Link 2 games have, like, the, have, like, the light world slash dark world? Is, that's the terminology, right? Or am I just getting confused with Delta and I don't know? And then the uh, other one has, like, high rule slash low rule and shit, and, like, there's the future and past Nocarina of Time. Like, a lot of different... 
a lot of Zelda games have like two parallel worlds to explore, and this game kind of does that with like the Sky Islands and the ground, because on one hand they aren't parallel and they also exist on the same plane. When you leave the tutorial area, you literally just jump out of Sky Islands, and then you just there's a lake set set up for you to fall into for you to, to like catch you when you jump out. That's how that happens, but like the. <laughs> That it may be technically how that's set up, but, like, they're functionally a separate thing. Like, they, they're on their own separate maps, which might, frankly, is kind of needed for it to be readable. But, like, there's a map of the Sky Islands and there's a map of the ground. Like, they really do function, as well as they're aesthetically different. The Sky Islands are, like, Zonai shit, whereas the ground is, like, normal, traditional Legend of Zelda Hyrule shit. Albeit, you find bomb flowers only on the Sky Island. But, yeah, it's, like, it is two parallel worlds in a way, in a very similar vein to that. Also, yeah, the Sky Islands thing. Without getting too spoilery, yes, the game very clear, like isn't it in the opening cutscene? It makes it very, very obvious that this is an intentional tie back to what's it? To Skyward Sword, which might actually be why they why they remade Skyward Sword a couple of years ago, but yeah. Anyway, back to what I was originally saying before I cut the audio to interject. You see Waking Hinox is walking around, that's uh yeah, I don't have much more to say, but I feel like I've spent most of my time talking about runes, so I feel almost guilty. It's, it is odd, but, like, the runes are the main mechanical thing there's to talk about, and I'm talking about the mechanics and stuff, and design and shit. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know, it's... You see uh, Hyrule being rebuilt on, on the surface, which is interesting. Uh, yeah, there's... I don't want to spoil it, so I really just need to cut myself short here. So I'm going to end up a finishing note on the title, i.e., this should have been called... Le it's called Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, but look. For years, we were calling it Breath of the Wild 2. Plus, it's part of the whole Breath of the Wild series. Like, it's a sequel to Breath of the Wild. There, so, but... They, I've been, for, due to force of habit, I've been calling it The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild Tears of the Kingdom, but it's just Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. But frankly, look, I think it should be called The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild Tears of the Kingdom. I don't care if it's a sub subtitle, I don't care if this is some Final fa fa Fantasy, Disney, <sighs> Kingdom Hearts, prequel, prologue, 4th edition, shit. It's not as bad as, like, that one particular Kingdom Hearts game with the insane title. Ugh. It's... It should, it should have been Breath of the Wild Tears of the Kingdom, but that's a funny note. So, uh, anyway, uh, this has already become a, f like, 15 minute long video in spite of the fact that I intended to be short as shit. So, uh, yeah. Hit like if you enjoyed it. If you've watched this point, you clearly enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more. Uh, bye. So, uh, yeah, that's the video. I may or may not have meant to release on Sunday when this was an even hotter topic than it is now, uh, and I'm releasing it on early Tuesday. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna keep this out for short because I got a little time, I got places to be, but, uh, yeah, I am so yeah, this is, uh, the foot. I didn't really go out of my way to get footage that was specific for the stuff I was talking about. This is more of a rush video than that. It was intended to be short and easy anyway. Big video last week, big, big video next week. Uh, yeah, hopefully it does well, because trending topic and all that. E e iMovie wasn't being too good for me, you know, it's not that I was doing anything particularly particular lagging, it was, li was lagging a bit, but like... <laughs> the iPad version of iMovie sucks, and the fact that I can't mask the least cells of looping animation, I just, like... It's really annoying I can't do that, and it's been really annoying with this, the point where I've had to come up with cope with, like, measures for making that more efficient because of how much I'm hurrying today, so, uh, I've been doing that after recording this outro, so, uh, peace.